Just a few words in English. Um, I'm going to do the same talk in English at the Berlin Vintage BER Dome, I think about 6 in the evening. So you are very welcome to listen to basically the same thing tomorrow in English. No, back to German. Thank you for the introduction. She was almost right. I don't sit in for the left. I am a referent in. in and I work with the uh, Abgad uh, Ort, um, two persons, and uh, my job is, um, I won't explain it exactly, I actually want to talk some, about something else today. It's um, what happened in the last year, a few facts, um, how does this one, Untersuchungsausschuss uh, Review Committee, how does it work technically? Um, what themes are there and who does it help? And what do we get from that? So, who will do it? You can see it a bit, but not completely. Um, this is this is the uh, the repartition. CSU and CDU are 80, per 80 persons, so that's the way it is also in this uh, review committee. SPD has two, um, um, two third, uh, and one for each of the others, and that plays a big role. Um, how the um, the votes run, and that's pretty much the way it works in the Bundestag and that's uh, which rights are there for the minority and for example the uh, opposition doesn't have that rights right now and uh, we can have a look but the people from the uh, re reigning fractions uh, do have must have uh, must review what is being done so that is um, always f swinging from they have to uh, defend their own um, their own um, government and on the other side they have to find something out as a member of the parliament so it's for each and every member is uh, it's very it's very uh, important to stay um, independent and that's very <coughs> and that they have to try to have a consensus for example if the opposition says if we want to have a look at this and that operation, then the, then the uh, the group starts to uh, to swim around. Do you really want to look at that or not? Um, it's uh, you you can actually um, you can really work with that. It's pretty practical. Um, the inquiry committee has existed since twentieth of March last year. The um, the parliament. Um, unanimously decided to uh, to establish this committee. There, before it happens, there, you know, it's talked about. Uh, it's established whether whether it should come into force. Um, first, you know, and um, and finally, it's decided in, in Parliament. And uh, three quarters of a year after the snow after the Snowden leaks. Uh, were published. Um, the pressure was so high that the coalition thought it had to, uh, all of you know, it, it had to be investigated. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if the same thing would would happen today. And there's this decision you see it on the right hand side, the first page of a five page paper. What um, the committee is supposed to find out. There are three important sections. The first one is. That to investigate the um, the Five Eyes buying in, in Germany, mostly by the U.S., uh, U.K., New Zealand, Australia. This um, strong cooperation from from Germany to Germany or within Germany. The second section is um, about the um, about the spying on the uh, on the on the federal offices. And finally, it's about um, um, about um, 
Mm. Um, you know how how, how Germany can can be how the uh, officers can be can be protected about recommendations. And when it's about spying of the uh, on the federal government and officers say it's not you know it's it's not the business of the committee we can tell them that yes it is a committee and we often have these kind of quabbles and there are more than 30 sub points you can read them online two interesting of them that haven't been talked about yet but that are very important and are going to play uh, an important role soon one is the secret war the war um, that happens on on Rammstein with drones and in, in how far you know the federal government knew about it and if Germany um, supplied data to the uh, the American government and if the concrete physical military base in Germany plays a role in the co role in the coordination of the drone war there are uncertainties there but it's well from our perspective it's um, unambiguously, um, un unambiguously um, illegal because it's not legal to um, support this kind of war. And se secondly, the um, the uh, the role of Americans in the um, question of immigrants, that's a long practice and well, we've been doing this for a year and in practice it means that the investigation committee um, works differently than other other committees it's mostly oriented towards um, criminal processes so the um, the members of the committee look at the um, uh, the actions of the government and it can do beweisbeschlüsse um, so the committee decides it wants to see all the um, all the files that in various um, offices and and secret agencies on the topics that are you know that are touched by the Snowden documents. <coughs> One effect of this is that we have get a lot, a lot of material. There are lots of these Beweisbeschlüsse, and the government has to hand these to the committee. And in consequence, the the committee um, uh, gets witnesses to, um, you know, to to speak in, in um, public hearings and besides there are non-public hearings non-public um, meetings where the committee you know talks about what what to talk about next what witnesses to to ask to appear and in in what you know in what order the the, the different topics are going to be talked about and should we invite Snowden on the right hand side you can sort of see and you can find it online the um the vice bush number one no it's not number one now i'll have it later it's a document bk1 that um uh, that proves that we get them and there are different kinds there are some NFD documents, which is only for um, the people who are allowed to see it. Um, there are some which you can see. VSV F S V is next one more secrecy. Um, it's uh, confidential. Then you've got secret and very secret, and there is some very special secret stuff. Um, about the investigation, we had uh, fifty eight. Um, we went there 50 times, and there will be a um, a document. We cannot we cannot change the law. We can just um, l tell the people to do it, the uh, Bundestag to do it, and then they do have the option to change it or not to change the law or not. So this is the uh, the way. This is more or less the the place where we can move around. This is the calendar. Um, there are only uh, some, it, it's not always um, in, in session, only in the red weeks there are some uh, sessions. Here you can have a look at um, how much stuff it is. It is only the first half of what we have looked at. Uh, on the other, you can see the different uh, ministries which 
um, lots of ministries. And on the left, what what did we get? Documents from uh, the uh, Snowden documents, uh, other documents which do have to first with the first part of the um, review of the inquiry. Organigrams from the ministries. Third, uh, that would be the third uh, column. Oh, you can see it much better here. Um, and at the end, when they have to be given, what time, uh, what, at uh, what day, and you can, sh it's, you can show how much material we have to work with, and that is a table who what uh, I did myself. That um, it's not an official document. The green ones are the ones who already have been delivered. There are some which are in light red. They say they don't have anything, but some other ones are simply incomplete. There are some uh, BND 26, and there is a document. And the Süddeutsche Zeitung reported that there were cases of espionage with selectors which search for data that had related with the Eurocopters and other confidential information. And the German government had was responsible for giving all the data that was available for, to the BND, because in the beginning it was important to understand that how this technical surveillance actually of the NSA because the USA was not willing to provide much information and therefore we they had to investigate the uh, participation of the BND um, in this issue. In April, the it was known that the selectors were used against German interests even Gathering of data of uh, by BND selectors um, that contain their target um, target selectors like phone numbers or names or email email addresses or check IDs and various identification uh, points that the NSA has that are formally correct. It is said just to um, to prevent terrorism and organized crime or the IS or illegal arms trade. But it uh, turned out that, well, 2,000 and later 12,000, and now we're at 40,000 of these selectors um, are about uh, politicians, about governments, the European Union or, or German, German companies. And the scandal started in April, and it's far from over yet. Which topics have we treated so far? I'm not going to list all of them. If you've been reading the news somewhat carefully, you will have noticed that it's changing very rapidly, which also um, also is due to the fact that we're trying to get us trying to find a certain structure of how we're treating all these subjects. But there are also lots of leaks in the press that I'm not going to complain about because they have often made our, our work easier because they often often talk about topics that are a secret that we know about but we're not allowed to talk about. But if it's been in the papers, we were, of course, able to say we want to speak about this in a public hearing because the public already knows about it. And that's why I'm going to just, you know, tangentially talk about some of these topics. You'll have read about some of them in the papers. The first of them is the uh, the witness Edward Snowden. It's uh, Z1. The committee has unanimously said that we want uh, Edward Snowden as a witness. The the discussion was about whether or not we'd invite him to, to appear, and the coalition said, no, we refuse. And in September, the opposition um, sued at the um, at the highest German court, but that didn't, didn't work for formal reasons. Um, I only started in September, but the rest of them had several hearings 
with um, experts with, uh, at law, some, some judges, whether it's um, it's legal that the BND um, surveils everybody abroad who isn't who aren't German citizens, which is sort of the uh, the difference between the BND and the Verfassungsschutz. One of them spies abroad, the other spies in Germany, and there are no. There are no restrictions on the surveillance of non-German citizens for the BND. At least that's what they think themselves. The, um, the federal judges said that um, you know this is the um, this this basic law is is not negotiable. It's not based on, on citizenship. And Hans Jürgen Papier, former judge at the um, at the federal court. Um, was also a witness, and he confirmed this. And the federal government, um, you know, accepted this but ignores it. That was really surprising. Nobody, not the coalition, didn't expect this. That its own refer um, its uh, its own experts would say this sort of thing. That was in summer, and in September last uh, in September. The, uh, the actual hearing starts, the whole Iconal story started, and um, it, it transpired that the BND um, spied for the NSA in, in Frankfurt. They uh, we don't quite know how um, gathered data and sends it to the NSA, and the BND <sighs> thinks it's legal. I don't think anybody else does. At least that's that's what that was very surprising even for the g10 members the commit committee of the uh, parliament that investigates in what in which cases the bnd had violated that um article 10 of the basic law and um in which cases it might be allowed to to spy on non-german citizens and a former member of this g10 committee was uh, visibly surprised and said if if they'd known that the BND had gathered data for the NSA in that in that order of magnitude then they'd never allowed it and the the whole buzz about the uh, about the project I can uh, um, stretch from from autumn into winter I don't know which of you which of you listened to the Landesverrat story in the other tent earlier? The uh, Landesverrat is treason. Um, so there was, it was a, it, it should not have been open, um, been public uh, based on the uh, opinion of the, uh, of the uh, government. And there has been a letter which, exp there was, a letter, a strong letter from the uh, from the um, government against the members of the committee, which uh, about um, uh, in November it was known that the general federal um, lawyer did not proceed with the police work on understanding why Merkel's handy was wiretapped. In December, the Klage? Um, Klage? Lawsuit. The loss. So, someone, the person from the BSI who actually uh, looks at the hardware and he these people people thought that when the BSC actually checks it they have a look at the hardware and look at what happens and in this uh, interview the the uh, they get it appears that they get a, a description and if that's okay then the um, BND does get the secret service does get the um, certification which is weird and it 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 was what well, people actually like that, especially that the controls um, from which everyone goes that yeah it's, it works well it is only a a masquerade it it's not a check.
And then there was uh, different um, letters. You can read them online. Um, let's go on. There was in February another, and there was no for the previous discussions about that, um, about strongly secret, well, some documents. There are some documents which are so secret and so problematic for the security of the state that... Um, They're critical. So, so only one person or one person from each fraction, which would be four people, actually is allowed to read these documents. These documents are there are in the uh, Kanzler Amt, which is in the place. They have to go there. They are not allowed to make notes and they have to remember what they have seen and they can only talk about talk about it with other people who actually have the um, very secret clearance so that is no almost no person is allowed or only people who have uh, been uh, cleared for very secret or strongly secret clearance for example i don't have i only have the lowest and uh, in, I tried, to, I wanted to get in September, it, it's six, it's, um, it lasted six months until I actually had the clearance for the lowest setting, for the lowest clearance, which was, um, she, which means that I uh, must talk um, face to face uh, face to face with the uh, secret service without um, without lawyer or without anyone and uh, I had to ask and it this means that the SU2 which is the clearance they don't need any uh, secret service activities they only have to use um, public material to check my clearance or to make my background check uh, there was to uh, have a look at the Wikipedia entry for my name and how exactly it they it lasted six months. I'm not sure, but um, anyway, the I am no allowed to see the uh, secret documents, but not the strongly uh, very secret documents. Um, and there are some. Well, I she she. Didn't, I didn't try to uh, get the very secret clearance, or strongly secret clearance. Um, we were back to the um, to the the secret operation in the public could be spoken. There was a very spectacular event that only the four op people knew what was going on. And then there was a session where the president of the BND, Schindler, and the coordinator of secret services uh, met. And there they, I was not there, part of the session, because it was top secret. And they talked about things where the representatives from the German government, um, sorry. They, they broke up uh, of the session uh, through all factions and they agreed to, um, to, to stop the session because they were unsure why, why they were being told so many things that are so very secret and and no, not 24 hours later, a lot of it was in um, in the Focus magazine, things that hadn't even been talked about in the session. <coughs> Some representatives were f f thought they'd been set a trap, and it would be, you know who told whom about what. Nobody really knew, and who who talks to the press, and it's it's still being investigated. It's also part of, of, of the Landesverrat case with different material. It's not about the uh, the investigation committee. It's it's but it's the same same thing. The, the government at least transports can 
face being being under pressure, in this case from the uh, British and American governments, that if so men, so much in Germany is given to the press and if, if they can't th keep things secret, that the British and American governments will stop their stop their um, secret service corporations and this happened in February with the UK at least that's what the focus wrote and later in April or May when it was about selectors uh, the same thing happened with the US I'm not sure which of you uh, has been reading site online recently they published yesterday that the government has said that certain things can't can't be can't be talked about about the selectors and can't be given to the committee and the US now have said that's not true the um, the government you know government just made that made it up and uh, so different there are different tales being told about who has what kind of degree of secrecy that you know always uh, Always go to the um, go to the committee and, and, and kind of questions of form. And there was the story with, of the um, of the hacked mobile phone of Zensburg, a committee member. And in April, the SPD started to um, started wanting to change the first BND law. <coughs> and there's also also the uh, f the Frankfurt Internet Node um, had been planning to sue the government, and then April the selector scandal started in May. Uh, the uh, there was a you know it that transpired that the NSA was stopping the um, the um, online surveillance, but the government said that it was you know because of you. And it all goes back and forth. Nobody really knows who gives secrets to whom. These informations about selectors were initially in the uh, Chancellor's Office and the BND and other ministries. They're given to others, maybe the Parliament, where there's a you know an, an office that that um, classifies these sort of things and then it goes to the committee so there are many people who hold these hold the material in the hands and could theoretically give it away starting with the BND itself so the government um, says the the uh, the committee has um, has given away their secrets and then the members members don't accept don't accept that As a result of that, it was said that the NSA um, thinks the whole trans thing is too too un insecure, and they were going to stop the uh, the surveillance. From our perspective, that's a very positive result. But fundamentally, there's the uh, the threat that Germany would wouldn't wouldn't know about planned attacks. I admit that I would not have been surprised if, if after this there would have been would have been tax. That so luckily was not the case. But I would not have been surprised if that had been the consequence of it. In May as well, um, there was a, the debate about the no spy agreement that Pofala in September two thousand thirteen had presented to the public with these weird emails between um, between the uh, German and American government that w about the question of, of after the Snowden leaks there should have there there were um, there were negotiations between the two governments of, of not spying on each other and the emails that weren't very nice for the government, for the German government, uh, but had not been treated publicly. The whole subject hadn't played a big role uh, because that would have been tra treated later in the uh, in the committee. But because it was so embarrassing for the government, it it was celebrated publicly. <laughs> After that, uh, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks started leaking protocols of the um, of the sessions of the committee. 
because these protocols, you know, even though the sessions are public, the protocols are not, which is very weird to a lot of people. It's illogical because if people are sitting in these public hearings and blog about it or, or write down the you know write notes why can't they can't, why can't we publish the protocols personally i i agree but you know working in the committee i'm the only and i can at least understand the argument against it why they shouldn't be publicized or at least not after after the the work is done or after the work on a certain subject is done so that the uh, the witnesses are, that are yet to to appear can't use the material to um to prepare for their hearings it's a very you know it's a very technical argument uh, it's a matter of uh, interrogation technique and try to avoid surprises uh, to or from the witnesses and that's the reason why they um, they weren't um, op they weren't public. It has been solved by WikiLeaks because at least now they are partly public. Um, in May, there was quite a lot. There was a there was the inform the um, big dispute about the selectors. The opposition tried to uh, sting to do something and the um, majority didn't and there were some special sessions organized or tried to there were some snowden to 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 um to to fighting votes and uh, where the um, opposition was you don't get the selectors nor there will be any special rules where the in Minister of Interiors, um, and it shows how nervous the federal uh, parliament is with regard to um, so the inter Minister of Interiors said in July that he has trouble dealing with such situations and it was clear that the air is really thin. After that, the coordinator of the Secret Services, Clapper in the US, the uh, um, committee is, she, he said that the committee of the Federal uh, of the Germans is more dangerous than Snowden itself. So, what is the result of all of this? There are many topics. There are two f f um, very fundamental things. The first one is the dealings with the contents itself, which is witnesses and questioning these witnesses. And there were some surprises to me. The committee first asked for material and it depends on what the federal German, uh, government is willing to give, to provide. And um, normally it is the, um, the committee which actually decides what secrecy level a document has formally. But in fact, the, um, the government tells us what the secrecy is and we keep to it and um, the people can lie to us during the hearings and we cannot do anything actually it is um, it is against the law but uh, well they they might be um, uh, attacked in form of law but it's well I'm I'm pretty sure that in such a situation with with a um, where the committee has 80 percent majority and the form is important and about constants and if you cannot check out check the uh, what the what the witnesses said you cannot really find out what happened so and it's it actually it's quite a lot of things came out 
So when you look at the big picture, there are lots of small small details for the BND, um, like databases with uh, some with um, uh, data shoots, which is um, data production problems. But that's details, and there are some other things which also are illegal, but there is some discussion with the um, with the government. The theory, when they sent data from sat from satellites, OK, when satellites get data and sent it to the uh, BND, well, they are created in space, not in Germany. So the um, so data protection does not apply. That's one detail. There are lots of details, which does not exactly fixes the data the details it's it's fuzzy but it's it's actually small stuff and they're going to do what they want to do so we can actually say that there are lots of rules and laws which are there for the secret service and because no one looks at it and because there has been no um, review committee well, these rules are being broken. Extr well, they're very, very free information, uh, free interpretation of the law. For example, the uh, the space theory is a very nice example. I explained that before. There's also an example where the uh, SPD started to uh, write a law, so to stop this practice, to stop this way of doing things. I think this is a good thing. I personally, I am very skeptical if it really helps. If the illegal pra uh, illegal practices of the secret services are written uh, are written in the law, I'm not sure. He, I'm not sure. I really expect a lot of things, but we will see. There is lots of these small things. There is also. The um, oh, there the um, witnesses from the BND are think that metadata are not uh, data about persons. So they have explained to us about um, phone masts, uh, for example, the drone war in Pakistan and so on, and that these data cannot be used to localize a person. So this is not a problem to send the uh, mobile masts data to the NSA because you and well they still get killed but there are lots of small details and that we are accumulating them we are getting them and we complete this li this list so we we can actually get an image we get a picture we are still at the start of the um, of our um, research, and I'm pretty sure a lot of it will, lots of things will come, uh, come to light. We haven't yet have a look at the uh, Five Eyes. We haven't looked at the Verfassungsschutz, the Inside Secret Service, and I'm pretty sure lots of things will come out. The other big part is um, who is it, about the form. There was a content note in the form. Who controls who controls whom? Um, there is theoretically in the democracy, it is it's not an, an interesting question because the form is um, of course it should be controlled, and the, normally the parliament contro controls the uh, the, um, the the government and. Uh, and um, you know, uh, members of government are always always in the in the hearings, at least fifteen of them, and watch what the committee does. And um, the, um, the the chancellor's office members they they always um, they they uh, take part in the in the hearings, and these are different points where these debates happen uh, almost and they take up almost as much room as the um, as the actual discussions <laughs> so um, <laughs> there are massive black uh, massive parts of the documents being blacked out as you can see in this tweet by Thomas Oppermann 
the photo is also very useful because I'm not sure if I if I you know if if I were be I were to be committing a crime if I I'd publish this sort of thing. So I'm I'm quite happy that Opperman did it. That you know now acts completely differently in the uh, in the government on this matter. The government. Um, allows all its witnesses to uh, to speak so you know people can't just come come in and say what they want to say they get a three to four page paper that tells them what they're allowed to say and what they're not allowed to say there's also the question of classification of documents some are not for uh, only for official use they're not very interesting there are lots of them so you know I have have an office in uh, in the in parliament and there's a room next to my office it's full of of this kind of thing these exist digitally as well as pdfs but you can't really search them or any any uh, you know archive them in, in another way and in that room there are also um, some some uh, s some shelves that contain secret documents and then there are in a different different place there are documents that are more highly classified and documents that are classified in that way can't be treated in the public hearings so they're not going to be discussed publicly unless they were they'd appeared in the news before and that well in that that's how the public only gets a small part and the less interesting part of the of the topics that the committee talks about the more highly classified documents will not be published in the um, in the final report there's going to be a public section and a non-public section in the final report and the, that section will only be able to to be read by certain people um, but um, you know, it, nobody can really use it because it, because none of it can be can be used in, um, in in matter that's going to end up publicly. And there are also massive restrictions in the uh, in the work. The consultation uh, procedure has been treated several times in the press. The government thinks that it, um, it has agreements with its partners in the Secret Service Corporation that all, all material that uh, about this, um, about the corporation, even if they're German, like protocols about sessions that it has, uh, this material can't just be given to the committee, but the instead the the American or British governments have to agree to give them to the committee, which is completely absurd, because the parliament uh, the the parliament is supposed to control the government. They, you know, uh, and. But the the government just says no. We're we're not going to play along. We're just we're going to to ask the U.S. government first if you're allowed to have the documents, which means that in you know factually we have some you know a few a few papers with American American documents, but most of what the you know most of the cooperation between NSA and GCHQ we haven't we haven't seen it so um, the next election is in t September 2017 until then our committee has to be has to finish and uh, if we um, if we're going to be able to to look at the U US view and and invite witnesses. I'm 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 skeptical. We'll have to see. And finally, of course, there are um, the, there are threats of lawsuits against um, against the committee. That's not very very easy to have it in your head. This this sort of barrier. These are secret documents. That I'm not allowed to talk about. These are public that I can talk about. It's it's a problem. It's not a problem, but. When you think 
that you know as soon as you say one wrong word you're going to you're going to be facing a lawsuit it mm, doesn't make the whole thing any easier and the perspective of government from from the perspective of the government it's not a pro it's not a problem because it's not my job to uh, to publish secrets but rather to help the uh, the representatives so far so good but uh, then again the parliament um the parliament's job is to to talk about subjects publicly and the the investigation committee has to um, has to start a, a public discussion and to allow that public discussion so we're sort of between a rock and a hard place um, uh, and in, you know assuming that there are going to be investigations against us who could have given something to the press it doesn't make the whole thing any more relaxed what else is there we're going to we're not done with the bnd yet the verfassungsschutz hasn't even started yet the question that's um that's still open is what happened after icona how did the technical cooperation between the bnd and the nsa in after 2006 the what happened the cooperation with the uk has has almost not been a subject either. The Verfassungsschutz plays a role, and after the uh, debates of the last weeks, this hasn't, you know, this is even more interesting. We'll try to um, to look at the five eyes. So after, you know, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and the question of secret war, drone war, Rammstein is going to be a big, big one as well. And of course, IT security and protection against surveillance. And the question there is, what did the government know about it? What did they know about the surveillance measures? And what did they do to uh, protect itself, the parliament, and um, and the German people? That's going to be quite inter uh, quite entertaining. What what's the point of all this? I've I mentioned that. The committee can't do that much. We can we can write a report, and it's, there's going to be a, a joint one between the operation, the coalition, and the coalition. There's also be, going to be a shadow report from the opposition alone. There's going to be a secret report that the public is never going to be able to see. All of this is uh, presented to the parliament, and that the parliament can then. Um, choose to um, to start new laws. There's everybody says that we need more more control more from the parliament. Many people say that the G, you know the the um, the control um, control bodies don't really work so far because people don't really understand what they what they what they're being shown here. And you know they they can't they they just and we need more people for the secret service. I personally think that as long as the control of the parliament, if the people in the parliament don't understand the technical implications, and if they are just being told what is going on without any way to verify that, then we will have no more improvement, even if we have more people in the committee, as long as we, they don't understand the technical implications. But I assume that this is going to be one of the results of the final report, just because nothing else can, can come out of it. And finally, I think that there's an interesting quote from So the quote is after every um scandal, scandal of um, secret services, the secret services themselves tended to be much more stronger than before. So we don't have enough people, but we couldn't do anything because so in the end more and more people will be responsible for surveillance in BND and Verfassungsschutz. And therefore the critical point is that 
I think it's important that as much information as possible should go to the public from this committee. And I also say this. Um, I'm not talking about leaks. I'm talking about um, the. I'm talking about the thing which are spoken about in the um, public hearings. Um, of we are we are trying to get more documents. We are having lawsuits against the against the government, so we get more documents about the um, to get the uh, list of selectors. We have there further reflections how how this obviously illegal way um, of doing things how we can. Um, sue them, um, for example, about so. So actually, we can uh, well at least stop it, to slow it down. Even though the um, the government thinks it's okay, um, we are talking about the cooperation w between the uh, government and the Secret Service, and something that helps is getting on the streets and protesting. Um, information, we need the information so the society can actually start resisting the surveillance. And that would be the end. I'm done. Big applause. Thank you for first thing. Thank you. That was quite a nice applause and very interesting theme. I think that we still have a few minutes for questions, and there are microphones around. Uh, people who don't have any questions, please do stay seated. So, if there are no questions, um, I can provide, um, I can tell you, I talked about a lot of themes, and if some people are interested about what I actually do or further questions, just talk to me and we can find some other time. So, there is one question at the microphone. First, thank you. The question I have is, a about the uh, fight about um, having Snowden as a witness, there has been it has been um, it's all been based on formalia to um, not have it. Um, the federal court of law just thought you know didn't. Um, <sighs> The whole thing, it, well, the whole thing is is, uh, is still up the up in the air, and we're we're still debating if we can if we can still get in front of the federal court of justice. I find it remarkable that you're here up on the stage. My question is, what is your motivation to stand here in front of a of a you know group of nerds and and people who who want who have or want information, giving them more information and an incentive to ask more questions and what, you, your motivation to get up at this day on this stage uh, to to speak about what you're allowed to speak about publicly because I hoped it would um, it would awaken your interest in the subject and um, that's obviously what happened and finally also because I have to say that when um, when this job was was being offered I thought it'd be really cool you're never going to get the chance to look, look at these documents again I really wanted to do it I'm interested in the topic of surveillance getting taking that opportunity to look 
to look into into at, you know look at look at the cards how the whole thing works technically how surveillance agencies work it seemed a one-time opportunity and then i don't do it because it interests me personally but because i also think that it's important for society and it's there's no point if it's all in my head i want to to reach as many people as possible because i wanted to stop Next question. It's just a short question of, of understanding the um, the degrees of classification. I'm, I understood that there's something beyond top secret that you you wanted to talk about later. Yes, there's there are top secret documents and. There are there are documents that can can be looked at in the so-called trepto process. Those are documents that the Parliament doesn't get because it's too secret, and those are usually very unpleasant negotiations with the governments. Um, and initially, people had to go to trepto near Berlin, and now there's room in the Chancellor's office where these people can go and re look at the documents. I think that was it, and that's the time as well. Thanks again to you, Anna.